Hey guys, I'm EP Guy here, and in this video I'm going to go over valves as if I was a complete beginner in Revit. So I'm going to start by opening up a new project. We're going to go get a plumbing template, hit OK. So for the start, let's just start drawing some pipe. I'm going to go to pipe, and it doesn't really matter the size, so let's just zoom in and draw about 10 feet of pipe. We'll zoom far in, and for this I'm just going to put this on the hot water system, so I get that nice bright red color. Now right now we're in the medium level of detail. If I changed it to fine, you would see the two line pipe, but I'm gonna go back to medium, and we're just gonna add in a ball valve. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to pipe accessory, and we're gonna hit yes. You're gonna to go to this location and go to pipe, valves, ball valves, and let's pick this two through six inch and hit open. Now Revit's loaded the ball valve, so let's just go ahead and put this ball valve on our pipe. As you can see, when I hover into it, it snaps to the piece of pipe, so I'm just going to click right here. And I'm going to hit escape to get out of the command. And now we see this ball valve, but we also see these little triangles right here. And what those are is they're increasers. And what this is telling us is our piece of pipe is decreasing in size to make this ball valve work. So let's click on the ball valve. And as you can see, it is a two inch ball valve. It says it right there. Now we need to change this uh, sizing we got going on here. So I'm actually gonna go down here and let's change it to fine level of detail. And let's uh, turn on our thin lines command. And we can really see what's going on. Our piece of pipe right now is six inches. So we wanna reduce that to uh, two inches. So let's do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tab all of this piping network and the ball valve. We're gonna to go to filter, and I'm going to deselect my pipe accessory, because I don't wanna change the size of that. And now Revit's allowing me to change the diameter right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it to two inch to match this ball valve size. So everything looks good now, so when we turn on our medium level of detail, everything's looking okay now. So it's important to remember that the size of this valve dictates those increaser symbols and if they're going to show up or not. So for instance, if I change this now to a four inch ball valve, I'm going to get more increaser symbols because my pipe's not the correct size. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're working with ball valves or any piping accessory in Revit. So let's go ahead and undo that by hitting control Z. And now I'm going to change my pipe size to half inch because that's a typical size we work with in Revit. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to filter so I deselect the pipe accessory. So now Revit allows me to change the diameter. So I'm going to change this to half inch. And you're going to see these increaser symbols. So now when we select our ball valve, we need to make it half inch. Well, there's no choices here, so we're going to have to create a half inch ball valve. So I'm going to go to edit type. I'm going to start with this two inch and I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to name it half inch. Hit OK. And we're just going to change this parameter down here of nominal diameter. And we're just going to make it half inch or 0.5 inches. Hit OK. And now Revit updates to this half inch ball valve. So everything is showing up correctly and there are no increaser symbols. Now there is an issue with the out of the box Revit symbol. Everything is kind of squished up and things aren't really looking how I'd like them to look. But I'd also maybe like to customize the way this symbol looks, so I'm going to have to do some customization of this actual ball valve. But before we customize it, let's take a look at this in a 3D view, really get a sense of what's going on. So I'm going to use this section box up here, and we're going to take a look at this in a 3D view. So right now, my detail level is set to medium, and if I change this to fine, and then turn on my thin lines, you can see my ball valve is basically just this piece right here and it's breaking these pieces of pipe. Now you can rotate this ball valve and I'm going to actually make it bigger just for this demonstration so you can make it bigger by just going to the drop down. And we're going to make it a nice big two inch. Now when I changed it to that half inch you can see that lever was getting a little messed up so that's something you also may have to fix with your you know standard ball valve and I will be doing some videos on how to make custom ball valves in the future. But for this, let's just um, you know talk about what's going on here. So this ball valve is just cutting this piece of pipe, and there are just the little connectors on each side of it that kind of dictate the flow through this ball valve. 
but we really care about the annotation right now. So let's just go back to the plumbing floor plan view and we'll turn off thin lines and we'll make our ball valve half inch again. And we want to make a custom annotation for this ball valve. So I have to edit the family itself. So we'll go up to edit family. And this is what the family looks like. It looks very similar to the family we were just looking at in the model or our 3D view. And basically there's just a bunch of um, extrusions and some sweeps and all kinds of stuff going on. But if you can take a look at this white portion right here, those white lines are dictating our annotation. So I'm going to actually move this to the window over here so we can really take a look at a side by side of what's going on here. So these lines right here are actually model lines inside this family that are dictating the way this annotation symbol looks. And that's not really what we want. We want it to be a straight up annotation. So I'm going to go back to full screen here. And what we're going to have to do is open up a top view or it's going to be called reference. So we're going to go to views, floor plans, and we're going to go to reference level. And when we first open up the reference level of this family, you can see there's a lot of dimensions and stuff going on. So the first thing I would recommend you guys doing is just go up here and set it to 12 inch equals a foot. And that will get rid of all those dimensions. Um, they're going to look a lot smaller because of the scale. So you can see the ball valve right in here, but we want to clean this up even more. So I'm actually going to just hide all the, the references and hide all the dimensions by going to VV or visibility graphic overrides and we're just going to get rid of dimensions levels reference lines and planes hit OK and now we can see things a little more clearly right now we have these model lines right here that are dictating the way our annotation looks so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those and now they're gone and so I'm gonna move this to the side again we're gonna look at the floor plan and when I load this in now those these model lines right here should be gone so we're going to load it in so we're going to go to load in project and I'm selected on this view so we're going to load this family in the project we're going to overwrite the existing version and as you can see these model lines have disappeared and that's what we're looking for there's still these little stubs right here so I forgot to delete those I just know from experience that they exist there so I'm going to go to a 3D view actually whoops this 3D view and you can see these model lines are still in this family so we're just going to delete them we'll select it right here delete we'll go to our floor plan and we're just going to load this back into the project so i'm going to click into the family and we're going to load it into the project it's going to ask if i want to overwrite the existing yes and those little nubs went away and everything's looking good because we've deleted the annotation so we're going to add our own annotation into this valve family so let's create a new annotation family by going up to File, New, Family, English Imperial Family Templates, Annotations, and we're just going to use Generic Annotation, hit Open. Now this annotation has been loaded into the project, we're just going to make this the full screen. And we'll zoom in and we'll delete this note. And this is my annotation family little project. So I'm going to create an annotation, so we're going to go to Create. And the first thing I'm going to create is this masking region because I want to break the pipe. We're going to use a circle. And we're just going to draw this 16th of an inch. So right here. Now let's draw some sides to our valve thing. So maybe just right here. And I'm just going to like sketch it out approximately what I think it should look like. We're just going to use the mirror command. And we'll add to our selection. And we'll use the mirror command again, and mirror it over here, and that looks good. And this is going to be my masking region, so I can't finish it off, because masking regions need to be one complete shape. So I'm going to hit continue, and we're just going to use the trim command, TR, and we're just going to trim the circle by selecting the lines we want to keep. Hit cancel here, and trim. We're going to select this one and this one hit cancel. So Revit's not letting me do it, so I'm going to have to figure out a better way. I'm going to hit unjoin elements right here. Then I'll just delete these. We'll mirror this whole thing. And that's going to be my masking region. 
I'm going to hit finish, and that's what it looks like. Now I'm going to create another annotation, but this time we're just going to use a line. And it's going to go over top of my little masking region, so I'm going to create a circle. And since I made it 1 16th, I can just enter that in right here. Hit OK. And hit Escape. And that's going to be my little annotation. Actually, I'm going to create the valve stem. And we're going to start it from right here. About right here. And here. And we can always edit this later if it doesn't look right. So we're going to actually load this annotation family into our valve family. So I'm going to go to load into project. And my ball valve is showing right here. So I'm going to load this annotation into ball valve. And I'm on the reference level, so I'm actually able to pop this guy in. Now I can snap it right to the center by going here, but I don't have my reference plane, so I'm just going to have to put it about right there for now. Now I'm going to have to show my reference plane so I can snap it to that, that center point. So I'm going to hit VV for visibility graphics. And we're going to go to annotation, and we're just going to throw in the reference levels and the reference planes. And now I'm just going to use the align command, and we're going to align from this reference plane. And you can see it highlights the center of that little annotation symbol we made. And I'm just going to lock it to that plane. And we're just going to do the same thing with this reference plane. We're going to go to here and select this midpoint, and we're going to lock it. And that way my annotation symbol stays completely centered within my family. So I'm going to hit escape. And now we have the valve family with that annotation family loaded inside it. Now I can actually go to my little annotation family project, and I haven't even saved it right now, and I can just hit close. And I don't ever need to save this. And the reason why is because that annotation actually lives within this valve, this valve family. So it's just kind of cool that you can save families within other families. It's kind of like Inception. Now I have this um, annotation family loaded into the ball valve family, so I'm going to actually throw it to the side. So we're just going to move it. And I just want to show you guys how what happens when we load it into the project. So I'm going to load this into the project. So I clicked into this window, and I'm going to click Load into Project. And we're going to load this project into this plumbing project. So I'm going to overwrite the existing version. And would you look at that, my little valve family has come into Revit and everything's looking great. Now maybe I would want to fix the sizes, but I think this looks pretty good for now. Let's investigate this a little further, but I'm going to go ahead and make it look kind of cool. And we're just going to hold control. I'm going to add another piece of pipe with some valve right here. And we're just going to change the system from domestic hot water to domestic cold water. Because that's a typical layout you're going to have. And I'm going to change this um, color real quick. So I'm just going to select the piece of pipe, piping systems, edit type, graphic overrides, and we're just going to make it this lighter blue color so you can see it better. So let's investigate these valves and the way they're functioning. So right now I'm on a detail level of medium. So if I change that to fine, let's see what happens. Now I changed it to fine and nothing happened. As you can see, the annotation symbol is still here, and my valve is way under that annotation symbol. So I'm going to need to hide this annotation symbol when it's in this fine level of detail, because that's like 3D. So when I have a 3D view, I have it in a nice fine level of detail. Now, if I wanted to do fine level here, uh, I can't see it now. So let's go back into our valve project. And I'm actually going to change visibility settings for this little annotation valve. So I'm going to click onto it. And if you look over here, there's some visibility properties we can mess with. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is just click on this edit button. And this is the visibility graphics of this annotation symbol. And right now it's set to display on coarse, medium, and fine. Okay, so we don't want it to display on fine levels of detail. We just want to uncheck that and hit OK. And now again, we're going to load it back into this project, overwrite the existing, and there we go, it disappears. So that is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to make sure your annotation symbols don't show up in your fine levels of detail because you want to be able to actually see the valves. Now the last thing we're going to look at is how this actually is going to look when it prints. So I'm going to close my little ball valve family. And let's just go ahead and change the level of detail to medium. And let's turn off our thin lines. 
so they're gonna look nice and thick. Now, this is kind of how Revit is displaying the print. So, you can see the piping looks nice and thick, and our valves, the line type is a little thin. So maybe we want to beef that up a little bit for printing. And one of the nice things about Revit, it does display things kind of how they would print. And it's, it's just a really cool uh, way to visualize things. So let's go ahead and change the way these lines are showing up on our annotations. So the way to do that is we're going to have to change the object style. So we're going to go to Manage Object Styles. And these are actually generic annotations. So we're going to have to go down to Generic Annotations under Annotation Objects. And right now the line thickness is 1. So maybe we should beef that up to maybe 4. Let's see how that looks. Hit OK. And that looks kind of nice. Um, that's nice and thick. And... You know, that's how we would want to display this thing when it prints. However, guys, there is one catch. Now, when I select this ball valve and I click one of these rotate symbols, that annotation symbol disappears. And the reason for that is because it's actually on a plane in that annotation symbol. So I'm going to click it again and it reappears. So you do have to make sure that the orientation of this ball valve when you place an annotation symbol inside of it is in the right orientation for your views. Now I do have some tips and tricks for some workarounds and I also will have in the near future a video on how to customize a ball valve to get it to work and operate uh, more efficiently. But for this video I wanted to show you guys how to add an annotation symbol to a you know any kind of valve or piping accessory it would be the same process for anything um, all you have to do is first create that annotation symbol and then just nest it inside any pipe accessory or actually any family within Revit it's the same process mm -hmm.